Hello, my name is Fauzia gibson -Fall. I am a PhD researcher in the School of Politics and International Relations at Queen Mary University London, where I research the role of um, African militaries in global health. And I was asked to create a short video to introduce my article published this week in the Review of International Studies. The paper is entitled Military Responses to COVID-19 Emerging Trends in Global Civil Military Engagements. And I'd like to thank um, Sophie Herman and Catherine Hall for their insights and comments in writing this paper. So this, this article kind of reviews documented incidences of military engagements um, in the first six months of the coronavirus pandemic. It untangles and situates these engagements amid contemporary understanding of military actors in global health, and it highlights issues of continuity and change and resistance in using militaries as health actors in emergencies, but also in kind of everyday policy um, and delivery. And scholars have commented in this journal and elsewhere about the rise of the global health security paradigm um, and the associated increases in security sector involvement in global health. And proponents of security sector engagements in public health tend to value the inclusion of the military um, in wider health sector capacity as a more efficient, more holistic take um, on state capability. But meanwhile, there's also a kind of public health, um, people-centered, rights-based community approach, which tends to caution against military involvement, which is deemed de detrimental to military outcomes, uh, to delivery outcomes, healthcare delivery, that is. And so both these considerations are arising in a murky arena. Um, militaries in, as health actors have remained largely marginal in global health and IR scholarship. Um, the article highlights some of the challenges in conducting civil military health research. And I also understand military global health practices as um, constituted at both the local and the global level through foreign and domestic interventions. And these practices are exacerbated through pivotal events. And so I identify, for instance, the Zika 2018 uh, epidemic or the 2014-2016 West African Ebola epidemic, whereby militaries have undertaken what was often deemed um, a central role in, 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 in these responses. And so the coronavirus pandemic um, stands also most obviously as a pivotal event in global civil military relations. And this brings urgency to establishing common um, definitions and frames of reference to apprehend health-related military engagements in all its complexity and in, in all its um, case uh, specificity. And I identify three main trends of military engagements in the first six months of the pandemic. Um, the first one being minimal technical uh, military support. This was uh, really embedded within you know, very consciously civilian-led responses which utilize military in very kind of niche technical um, mechanisms. Then you had the most widespread um, engagements which I call blended civil military responses. And you had a third um, trend, which was military-led responses. So those were responses in which military took the entire leadership. These involvements at all um, three levels are fomenting new COVID-19 military, civil military um, assemblages, which will influence the future of local and global civil military relations. And, and in light of these three levels of participation, it appears that the recourse to military is threefold. First, it follows a country's historical legacy, so in civil military relations and perceptions of military delivery. Second, these engagements tend, um, tend to occur to fill gaps when, when, when systems are overwhelmed. So this is universals and it follows contagion threat levels and health systems ability to cope with the epidemic pressure. This is also more widespread, widespread in states with weaker health systems um, or where the military has historically run civilian serving um, services. In certain contexts, however, there seems to be a push factor occurring whereby militaries will position themselves as responders. Um, and this is not necessarily marshaled through centralized decision making um, and will create kind of tensions uh, within wider uh, civil military relations. A third and important part of um, the story is compound by top down pandemic uh, preparedness models. Um, 
and, and, and delivery framework. And, and when adopting securitized biomedical responses with uh, countries with weaker health systems tend to recourse to top-down, often military means. And in COVID-19, these responses are marshaled through the military to enforce measures such as lockdown surveillance and border closure and, and contact tracing. And so we urgently need to know more about the impact of these involvements. Um, do they make people feel safer? Do they impact on health seeking behavior? We need to understand case variability and con context specificity. And in COVID-19, what is becoming clear is that um, there is an increase in policy and practice linking military and health actors. And this is likely to have a normative impact further entrenching militaries as common actors um, in the health realm. And really global health and IR scholarship should focus on the ways in which um, civilian capacity and civilian institutional lacunas are compensated through military means. And this would allow for better and more resilient community responses. So I hope this made you want to read the paper um, and thank you for listening.